So how does the guy change the screen on this? To where? Well, oh, there's two screens. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's... Yeah. Airplane mode on the other day. Welcome to the National Museum of Military Vehicles. Um, this video will give you a brief overview of what you can see in the museum today, as well as what we hope you will return to see in the future. The core of the museum is the world's largest private collection of military vehicles. More than 400 vehicles, artillery pieces, naval vessels, and aircraft ranging from 1897 to the present. Most of these vehicles are on site, although a few of them are off site for restoration or are dedicated grade vehicles. Almost all of our vehicles are operable. The focus of this museum is to tell the stories of how these vehicles were used and to remember the valor of the service members who fought and sometimes died in them. June 9, 1944. The beach is firmly in a lot of hands. The work of the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard and the combined Allied Sea Forces has been done. Work not without a price in men and material. Our General George C. Marshall Gallery tells the story of the American experience in World War II. The gallery begins with the story of amphibious landings in the war, including the specialized vehicles created to make these landings successful. The Normandy D-Day landings are the most famous, but similar landings took place in North Africa, Italy, Southern France, and throughout the Pacific Theater during World War II. The United States could not have won the war without these amphibious vehicles, which enabled our troops to hit the beach under enemy fire. After amphibious landings, the Marshall Gallery leads you into our early war experience in North Africa and in the Battle of the Congo. General MacArthur's entire army of 75,000 U.S. and Philippine troops surrendered at the Battle of the Congo, leading to the Baton Death March and the death of 10,000 prisoners during the March to POW camps. After the Congo in North Africa, you will enter the U.S. Combat Vehicle Rotunda, where you can see examples of every major ground vehicle the U.S. used in combat during World War II. America's ability to design and manufacture all of these vehicles in just three years was due to the strength of the economy as well as its complete mobilization to support the war effort. One lesson learned in World War II is that the strength of our national economy and the strength of our national security are two sides of the same coin. Next in the Marshall Gallery is the Red Ball Express. The Red Ball Express is little known today, but during World War II, it was famous as an example of American ingenuity and what our troops could do under duress to stay in the fight against Germany when there were limited ports we could use to supply American, British, and Canadian troops after the breakout from Normandy. If a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, Allied troops were only as strong as the Red Ball Express. Improvised efforts like the Red Ball Express have matured into what today is an American system of military support and logistics that is the strongest in the world. We conclude the Marshall Gallery with examples of late war campaigns, the unconditional surrender both of Nazi Germany and of Imperial Japan, and thoughts about the cost of war. Over 76 million people died in World War II. Many more were wounded. Billions of dollars worth of civilization was destroyed. World War II showed that appeasement and isolationism may be well intentioned, but that they backfire as policies of national security and cost more lives than they save. Lessons learned from World War II made the United States determined to nip aggression in the bud in the future fight smaller wars earlier, and avoid World War III. These lessons set the stage for the limited wars we fought in Korea and in Vietnam. Our General Lewis Chesney Fuller Gallery will tell the stories of the Korean and Vietnam Wars, 
exhibits are not yet in place in this gallery, but feel free to walk around the gallery and see the vehicle sitting there to the extent construction permits. When the Fuller Gallery is finished in 2021, the Korean War exhibit will remember the surprise attack by the North Koreans in 1950, the American last stand of the Pusan perimeter, our counterattack at Incheon, the battles at the Chosen Reservoir after China intervened, and ultimately, stalemate and an armistice that remains in effect today. Our Vietnam War exhibit will present Vietnam as a helicopter war covered live on television. When and in service, the brown water navy, jungle warfare, urban warfare, and the consequences of the 1968 Tet Offensive. One highlight will be immersion into an American firebase in Vietnam. After the Fuller Gallery, you will walk into our General George S. Patton Gallery. Exhibits in the Patton Gallery will rotate from time to time and include small artifacts and display cases, as well as vehicles and other larger artifacts. One highlight of the Patton Gallery is a Dodge Touring Car, the first motor vehicle used in combat by the United States Army in 1916. Other highlights are vehicles used in World War I and a remembrance of John J. Blackjack Pershing, commander of the American Expeditionary Forces in Europe during World War I. Another must-see in the National Museum of Military Vehicles is our weapons park. Our prized firearm is the musket that fired the first shot at Bunker Hill, the Private John Simpson musket. We know that Private Simpson fired the first shot at Bunker Hill because he was court-martialed for doing so. He violated the order to hold until he could see the whites of their eyes, even though he hit his target with his early shot. The musket then stayed in his family until it was acquired for this museum in 2019. This musket symbolizes the role of the citizen soldier, the origins of the Second Amendment, and the beginning of our nation. Another highlight in the weapons vault is a revolver once used by the famous frontier lawman Wyatt Earp. A third highlight is a Model 1873 Winchester owned by the Lakota War Chief Raymond McBase, who fought in Custer's last stand, the Battle of the Little Bighorn in 1876. Don't miss the submachine gun in a briefcase. The trigger is hidden underneath the briefcase handle. The muzzle fires directly out the side of the briefcase when the briefcase is closed. Finally, if you've not already done so, please visit our outdoor wall of reflection when you exit the museum building. The quotations on the wall behind the M60 main battle tank remind everyone why we honor and thank our veterans and veterans families for their service and sacrifice on behalf of the United States of America. Please enjoy your visit here at the National Museum of Military Vehicles.